quality of of uh, what we were achieving, and and yeah, it was extremely satisfying. And okay, so once we figured out the the lighting system, I mean, we kind of went both ways at the beginning. Martin kind of disappeared for a few weeks to to experiment with the lighting system because he had an idea, an idea of how to you know cre create this whole philosophy, how to set up this whole system. And I kind of moved uh, a bit more into developing the style and the look of the world, you know, that the characters are gonna inhabit. So obviously we did a lot of research of you know, this is going to be Scandinavia, it's going to be like 19th century, um, winter. Uh, so we looked a lot, at a lot of paintings from, from kind of that period of time to see how the life of, of people looked like, what kind of details we can have, you know, around the houses. Because now obviously we'll have cars and trash bins and whatever, but then it was like barrels and ladders and, and this kind of stuff. And so we, yeah, we, we did a, quite a lot of research to kind of see how, how the world could, could have looked like at the time. And then we knew there's going to be a lot of snow. So we did a lot of research on the snow and just finding all this cool stuff, uh, you know, that immediately inspires, you can see the, the, the kind of graphic potential uh, in all of that. And also it helps that me and Martin both come from Poland because we, we know a lot about snow as opposed to Sergio Pablos who's from Spain and doesn't know anything. That's why you don't see any characters wearing mittens, almost any characters in the movie, because for Sergio it wasn't important. You know, it, you can tell he never experienced a real winter. Mm, so one of our main inspirations obviously was Ivy Earl uh, and, and his Christmas postcards and this whole amazing simplified style. Um, but we also didn't want to obviously just, you know, make a tribute or copy. And, and, and this is also kind of too flat for, for what we wanted to achieve. It's, it's kind of still is volumetric, but it's, it's pretty graphic and flat. Uh, so this is one of, like, I think the very first houses that I was trying to figure out because how Sergio really liked what Pascal Campion did with the, uh, with the pitch book illustrations. He really liked the lightness of Pascal's style. So he wanted to, when he was briefing us, he, he wanted to try to kind of infuse a little bit of that lightness into, uh, into the design of the movie. So these were like super first uh, explorations. And then these were some sketches that I did to, to explore the, the design of the post office um, and kind of explore how we can use snow also as a kind of storytelling tool. And we wanted for the environment and the snow to be kind of a, a very present, uh, prominent, you know, force in, in that world. And this is also one of the very early images. And, and actually, this is the, an image that when um, it was one of the very, very first images uh, we did. And when certain, we are still thinking about making the, the environments in 3D at this point. And when Sergio looked at this image, he said, OK, I, I really want for those textures to, to feel like that on the screen. I, I don't want to translate this to 3D and, and come up with some kind of, I don't want to sound bad, but kind of like a washed out version you know, of, of that. It's like when you go through the whole process and the whole machinery of 3D, you always kind of end up at the end with something that is out of your control in a sense. Like it's always in a sense. Mm, you know, like like just produced by the by the computer. It's always going to be very realistic in terms of how uh, how the volumes are. You know, when you look at this illustration, many things are very flat and uh, and loose, and some edges are you know kind of mm, dissipating. So we really wanted to kind of retain that control. There's obviously nothing wrong with 3D. 3D is awesome when it's well done and it's it's, it's whole own world and it's it's an amazing tool. But for this movie, we really wanted to kind of you know, get that, have, retain that control and kind of have that handmade quality to it that we felt was also more appropriate to, you know, when you put 2D animation on top of it. Mm, and this was one of the, the images uh, later on during production, actually, when we were trying to figure out what would be the style for the trees and, you know, and, and the vegetation and, and this kind of stuff. This was one of the, I think this was the very first image where we said, okay, this is more or less the style of what we would like to go for with the Yeah, I, I think that was the milestone for us. Like, yeah. you know, when you produce that image, everybody went like, okay, we just love the style. Let's just make the movie look like this. Uh, I think it triggered the whole process. Like, you know, after this image, like most of, you, you figured out uh, most of the stuff, you know, within this image. Then we just tried to expand 
yeah, explain on top of that. And we actually ended up with something that was a bit more realistic, in a sense, because uh, as the story development uh, progressed, we kind of realized that the tone of the story is a bit more serious, a bit less cartoony, uh, specifically the second half of the movie. And we felt like going too cartoony with the style of the world was kind of taken away from the uh, from the seriousness of the of the story. Uh, so, so we went a little bit more realistic with some aspects, but still the idea was to kind of like based on the research and the idea was to create kind of visual symbols, you know, to create a visual symbol for the snow, visual symbol for the trees, for the rocks. We didn't want to go into realism. We wanted to go into something that feels real, even though it's, it's, it's a symbol that stands in, you know, for an actual object. So if you want, you can think about it that in terms of like, if you look at the hair on the characters here, right, on 2D characters, you never draw every single strand of hair. You just create a graphic shape that is a representation of the hair. And since it's in the right place, it has the right color, uh, it moves in the right way. We all understand that this is hair, right? So we kind of wanted to translate that. We wanted for the world, for the backgrounds and for the characters to kind of have the same philosophy. And so we kind of extrapolated this thinking into backgrounds as well. So kind of operating with symbols uh, rather than actual realistic depiction. And then once you put the lighting on top of it, you know, we used lighting in the same way on the backgrounds as we did with the, with the characters. They kind of blend together. And we really, we really wanted for all the elements, you know, of the, of the frame to kind of work seamlessly together. And we really wanted to go away from this kind of feeling of old animated, 2D animated movies where you have this kind of flat character with this one layer of lighting with the outline, and then it's put on top of the beautifully painted uh, oil, you know, painted background. And then you can feel that they just don't blend, you know, it's a sticker on top of the, uh, on top of the environment. Um, so we also, as we mentioned, you know, with the textures, we really wanted to use the same kind of principles for the texture. So there's like little grainy transitions between light and shadow. And yeah, we really wanted also for the effects to be nicely integrated with the, with the environment, with the, you know, with the characters, with, with, with everything pretty much. Really, we didn't want to have this kind of a feeling, you know, like when you look at a traditionally animated movie and let's say you have a, a wall of greenery with a lot of leaves, and they're all beautifully painted. And then you have a patch of leaves that are just like flat shaded. And you know that something is going to come through those leaves. Like you know that something is going to happen with them because they had to be, you know, animated traditionally. So they had to be flat. So we really wanted to kind of, as much as we could to, to avoid that. So, uh, to, you know, to that end, we sometimes even went as far as painting effects frame by frame. This is actually this matching that. Yeah, and because we, we failed like designing the system for automatically put some lighting or, or uh, texture on the effects. I mean, there were possibilities, but we found out that it, it's actually faster to just paint it frame by frame. Uh, 